Hi everyone, this is Jim. I'm making this video to let you all know that uh, I'm going to be uh, not uploading any videos for about a week. Today I'm flying down to uh, uh, Phoenix, uh, driving down to Tucson to play in the U.S. Uh, Amateur West tournament there, which goes on um, all through the three-day weekend. And then I'm going to visit some relatives and then come back. So about a week I'll be gone for and then, then I'll have some new uploads. Hopefully I'll uh, give you the uh, my, some updates from the tournament if it's not too bad. Uh, I'll, I'll show some games from the tournament. Um, but anyway, to have a little chess uh, content in this video, I also uh, played a miniature recently, a Blitz game. And uh, it was uh, in the famous Martial Defense, which uh, I had uh, recently played in, uh, and did a video on in my Blitz Chess with Live commentary. So another example of how to destroy the Martial Defense. So in the Martial Defense... <laughs> In spite of the fact that I see it fairly often, it's, it's really not a particularly good defense. Although you can play it better than what my opponents have been playing. Um, so I take, he takes with the knight. I go uh, knight f3 to stop black from playing e5, getting counterplay that way. And bishop f5. I don't really think bishop f5 is the best move, but it maybe is a little bit tricky for people who are not uh, used to the martial defense. But probably you need to just do normal development with... Uh, Knight to c6, pawn to e6, get this bishop out, castle, and uh, just accept the fact that you're going to have a worse position because this knight will get kicked away, so you'll lose the tempo and you'll have less space. But uh, other than that, it's okay. <laughs> you can play the game. You're not losing. Um, you're just worse. Uh, but bishop f5, uh, you know, it's also playable, but maybe not the best way to play it. Knight bd2 is the answer. I think the simplest way to deal with that, it comes with this immediate threat of um, e4 with the fork, so that has to be dealt with. Usually they play bishop to g6 right here, uh, or knight to b6. That's another option, knight going back. But what my opponent played is just wrong, and so he's probably already losing from this position. So I can go ahead and play e4 anyway. I need to play it, actually, because I need to block the bishop to deal with these threats. Um, so he dropped the bishop back along this diagonal, and um, that is a real mistake. Right here, I can uh, win the game with uh, with a single move. So if you want to uh, spot the tactic here, uh, why don't you see if you can find the move? Okay, uh, I didn't. It was a blitz game, and I didn't spot this or I didn't play this move in the in the game. Uh, but the queen check here is fatal. The queen check. Um, the, the bishop can't come back to block it, and the knight's hanging anyway. And when the knight comes back, uh, you can push the d-pawn forward. So uh, anyway, that would be uh, a quick end to this game. But, uh, well, I played the less effective check. I went bishop b5 check. I played c6, dropped the bishop back. So the game continues. Cancel that. Let's see. Oh, I went bishop c4. Yeah, I put the bishop on this diagonal. thought that might be good. And my opponent still playing in this kind of hyper-aggressive mode, I guess trying to justify his bad opening, plays f5. And uh, so I had to think about this position. I thought this was one of the points that made the game kind of interesting. What would you do here about this move e5? I mean, f f5. You know, it is threatening the e-pawn. And uh, you could push the e-pawn forward. Anyway, yeah, if you want to pause the video and, and think about it, there, there's lots of different ways you might consider to deal with it. Okay, I'm going to talk about the move I played. I decided to just ignore it. I played the move knight to b3. And um, when I looked at this position with the chess engine, it also wanted to ignore the pawn, uh, the threat to e4. Um, but the, the engine says the best move here is castling. But I have to say this is, um, this is a very similar idea. I castle, takes the pawn, I go knight e5. And, um, and the idea with the castling is that this rook can come out quickly, the knight's hitting the bishop. It's just getting good development and not worrying about the piece. And uh, White's actually much better in this position, even though not worrying about the pawn. Even though he's down a pawn, he's actually much better in that position. The way I play it, White is also better. I just um, play knight to b3. The idea is uh, I want to have uh, easy development for this bishop who wasn't yet worried about getting the rooks in the game, although it makes a lot of sense with Black's king still in the center to get the rooks on the central files there quickly. Anyway, he went ahead and took the pawn. I went knight e5, like we saw in the computer line. And he goes knight d7 here, challenging my knight. So that's not a bad idea. But uh, I 
just decide to, uh, I don't want to retreat the knight, so I trade it off for one of his uh, developed pieces and also look at his pawn structure. This is the other reason why I wasn't so worried about giving up a pawn. Um, I, there were also other ways to play that position, but actually just giving up the pawn was uh, the, the engine's, the chess engine's top choice. Anyway, yeah, this, this pawn is nothing to worry about, and, and these doubled pawns combined with these doubled pawns uh, presents a pretty sad appearance. And um, notice that black is nowhere near castling because uh, on this side the queen is in the way, and on this side the bishop is in the way, and it's blocked in by pawns. So black's king is kind of stuck, and his pawn structure is a mess. And uh, right here, I have a good move. I, I don't play uh, till the next move. I, I play a3 first, kicking his knight back. And actually, uh, black can wiggle and squirm a little bit with the move knight to b6, kicking my bishop around. So that was not, a6 was not an accurate move. But he didn't uh, didn't play the best move here. He just retreated his knight. And now queen g4, which I could have played instead of uh, a3 there. Um, but queen g4 is, is a great move. Um, looking at this pawn, which actually is uh, impossible to defend. Is uh, Yeah, if the rook comes up here, the bishop takes it. So we can't defend with the rook. And uh, let's see if the knight comes here, the pawn takes it. So that, that, that pawn is actually a goner. And also, notice the king has no, uh, no squares to move to. So if a piece lands here, uh, like a bishop or a queen, um, that would be checkmate. So anyway, he plays knight f6, which uh, solves the mate problem, but gives up this pawn. And his king uh, is chased away from uh, its home square. I play queen f5 check, and uh, he could probably run back, and the game might uh, continue. Although obviously I have a, I have a great attack, and now I'm even uh, I'm, I'm even in material. Let's see, three pawns against three pawns, and three pawns against uh, three. Yeah, so I've evened the material, and I have a great attack. And black has lost uh, castling privileges and has terrible development. So still winning for white, but uh, the game would go on longer. Anyway, he ran this way with the king, went to c7. I come here with the bishop, getting another piece into the attack, so Paul Morphy would be proud. <laughs> Although I didn't get my rooks into the game, but, but bringing a new piece in uh, off the back rank and joining in the attack, that's a typical uh, Morphy strategy. And now uh, he plays king to b6, and uh, it's an immediate mate. Um, there is kind of a, a defense here. I mean, it doesn't, uh, white still wins, but uh, you know, black can hold on a bit longer. I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, the move e5, you know, it just e5 temporarily blocks the bishop, but after I take, it also opened up the uh, this diagonal for his dark squared bishop to block. And then let's see, knight c5 was the line given by the chess engine. So this is uh, still winning for white, but um, let's see. And now white's actually up a pawn, but. Uh, um, and the attack is continuing, but uh, yeah, it's mainly the attack that's uh, that's winning here. But uh, my opponent made things uh, simpler for me by playing um, after the check. He played king to c7, and after the bishop came out with the check, he went uh, king to b6. And uh, see if you can spot the last move of the game. Okay, the final move of the game was queen to a5 mate. Very pretty checkmate. The king caught on the side of the board but uh, blocked in by his own pieces and the queen supported by my knight here is sufficient by itself to deliver the mate. I don't even need the, the bishop uh, over here blocking off his uh, escape squares or this bishop. So just the queen and the uh, knight were sufficient for that mate. Anyway, uh, cute game. Hope you guys liked this and uh, well, I'll just uh, see you when I get back. Bye.